Hello everyone, welcome back. Suppose I have a two dimensional binary classification problem. That means I have two features or two predictors and I want to classify the data either in one of the two groups. So, here I have shown visually that type of uh, data set, a training data set. So, I have two classes, positive class and negative class. The red colored dots are the negative class data and the blue colored dots are actually data labeled as positive class. And as I said, it is two dimensional. So, I have two predictor or features x1 and x2. I want to classify this training data set to create a classifier. Looking at this data, you can uh, easily assume that maybe I should draw something a line like this, a straight line like this to classify or partition this data in two sections. That is what I have drawn here, a, a brown color line. So, on this side of this brown color line, I say this is negative data set, negative class. On the other side, it is positive class. But looking at this space, you can may be wondering that how should I decide that how to draw that line, that straight line. Because in that region, I can draw infinite number of straight lines. For example, one line can be like this, another line could be like this, another line could be like this. So, you can draw this with thousands and uh, lakhs of this type of straight line. So, how should we decide what will be the best straight line that will divide this space in two part for my binary classification? To achieve that one, to achieve that best line, what I will do? I will take help of something called margin. So, let me first define what is margin. So, suppose this uh, uh, brown line is my decision boundary or the line, the separator. And now, it is a straight line and I now calculate the distance of each of these data points, both positive class and negative class from this boundary, from this decision boundary. And uh, for example, uh, for these data point, this may be the distance, the dotted line and the distance is d. So, now I define margin as something which is the distance of the closest data point to the decision boundary. So, let me check. Uh, roughly seeing in this data, it seems uh, this may be the closest data point to this straight line, this decision boundary. So, I calculate the distance between this point and this line. So, this is uh, the, maybe the DC, the closest distance, right? closest data point. So, this I will call, this one I will call the margin M. And now, I will use an algorithm that will try to create a decision boundary in such a way that we get a maximization of this M. So, what I will do? I will use an algorithm to find out the decision boundary that maximizes the margin M. What is margin? I will repeat again. Margin is the distance of the closest data point from the decision boundary and I want to maximize that margin. And this algorithm will be called the maximal margin classifier. And this way I will define, I will decide the line that will separate this space in two part, one for positive sample, one for the negative class. Now, the algorithm uh, uses linear algebra and is quite a efficient way uh, to uh, achieve this. I will not go in detail mathematics of that, but what I will do, I will use a one dimensional example to understand the consequence of this algorithm. So, suppose I have a one dimensional data and uh, in this case I have only one feature, suppose that is called x and again the uh, pink dots are uh, negative class data and the blue dot squares are the positive class data. This is my training data set. I want to use the maximal margin classifier to classify this in binary fashion. So, that means I have to draw something here. I have to make a decision boundary somewhere here. And as I said, I will use the maximal margin classifier. That algorithm I will use. So, let me first uh, draw a line to separate these two. This uh, brown line is right now. So, what is the margin? The closest point is this one, right? This is my boundary and this one is my closest point, data point. So, I can calculate the margin. This is the margin, right? 
So, this is margin. So, now I want to maximize the margin. How can I maximize the margin? I can maximize the margin if I move this divider, this brown line on that side. So, if I move that, now see the margin has increased. Now, as I moved it on that side, now the closest point is no more this point. This point is no more the closest point. Now, the closest point is this blue box. So, my definition of margin will say, now the margin is this one. So, now you have to maximize that one. So, you can play around, right? And if you play around with a paper and pen, you try it, you will realize immediately that maybe the best divider, the best decision line would be somewhere between the mean, the midway between this uh, red dot and the blue dot, the negative data point and the positive data point. And that is correct. The best line as per the maximal margin classifier would be somewhere in the midway, in the midway of the closest positive and negative data point. So, if this distance is uh, something like capital D, so this one will be D by 2. So, the margin will be D by 2. So, this is in one dimension. So, now if I use the same principle, then uh, if I use the same uh, maximal margin classifier for a two dimensional problem, the one I started with, and in fact, this is what uh, not a uh, arbitrary written diagram, I have used a, a classifier to classify a real data. So, then I get this result. So, this is my decision boundary, the line, and as you can see, the closest point to this line are this one, this one, this one, and this one. 3 of them are negative sample and 1 of them is the positive sample and the decision line, decision boundary is in the midway of this positive and negative sample. So, this whole shaded area is sometimes called the margin, although by definition margin we said the length of uh, distance of the closest point from the decision boundary. Sometime in day to day use, we say this is the margin boundary, margin boundary. By our calculation, this is the margin and this is also the same value margin. And as you can see, I have a road type thing, I have a strip surrounded by this margin boundary and the decision line, the decision uh, boundary is in the middle of that. Now, if you go for higher dimensional studies also, you will get the similar behavior. Now, before I move forward, let me discuss about these points which are on the margin boundary, these four. These four data points are called support vectors. Why vector? Because remember each of these data point is actually a vector. For example, suppose this one has a value of uh, 5, 2. So, that means x1 is 5, x2 uh, is 2. So, how can I represent that? I can represent that by a vector 5 and 2. So, each data point is a vector. So, now these four data points which are on the boundary of the margin, right, margin boundary, these are that is why called support vector. We say support because they are actually defining the decision boundary. If you look into the mathematical analysis, you will realize that the way the algorithm works, the position or the position of this decision boundary, this line, straight line is decided only by these points which are on the margin boundary. No other point. We have so many other points here. We have so many other points here. Those points does not decide this boundary line, this decision boundary, this straight line that is that is dividing my data in two part. So, that means this classifier, this classifying line is supported by these uh, red marked uh, data points which are on the boundary of the margin. That is why they are called support vectors. Now, the advantage of that is that see if I change any of the data point, for example, if I move this data point to here, right that will not change the line, that will not change the decision line. So, that means my classifier will remain same. 
as long as I do not disturb the support vector data points, my classifier will remain unchanged. And the other interesting thing is that as the, uh, the, the decision boundary is decided by only this handful of support vectors, my calculation becomes much easier. Now, I have discussed about the maximal margin classifier algorithm, the logic behind it. So, suppose I have used it and tra trained uh, a classifier using a training data set. Now, I have to test it on a test sample. So, suppose I have three test sample and I have shown their position by this circle. Now, this one, suppose this is my first uh, test sample T1. You can easily see T1 is on the side of positive sample with respect to this decision boundary. So, that means I will say this is positive. Take the second sample. This one is again on the positive side of the decision boundary, but within the margin area, but it does not matter. As it is away on this side with respect to the position boundary, this will be a positive sample. Using the same logic, this one, suppose I say this is state sample 3, it will be negative. So, what I am doing? I am the classifying the data based on their position relative to the decision line. Here I have done that visually, but using a simple algebra, as you know the equation of this line, you can use a simple algebra to uh, decide whether a particular test sample belongs to the positive class or negative class. Now, this is two dimensional problem, right? I had two para predictor or features, but that will not be the always true. We will usually have large number of predictor or features. Take this example. It is a three dimensional data set. Again, it is binary because I have two class, positive and negative class, colored by pink and blue, but the parameters or the predictor or the features are three, P1, P2 and P3. So, when it was two dimensional, I have drawn a line, my decision boundary is a straight line. What should be the decision boundary here? In this case also, I can use the maximal margin classifier principle to maximize the margin. But what would be the shape of the decision boundary? In this case, the shape of the decision boundary will be a plane, it will be a two dimensional plane. Now, using the same logic, Suppose you have n dimensional data, suppose n equal to 30. That means you have 30 features or 30 predictors based upon which you want to classify a data in positive, negative, disease, not disease, something like that. So, in that case, the decision boundary will not be a line, it will not be a two dimensional plane, but rather it will be a n minus 1 dimensional hyperplane. I cannot visualize it. But in the space, there will be somewhere there will be a hyperplane which will divide this my data set in two part, one for positive and for negative, one for disease, one for not disease. So this is how nicely maximal margin classifier can divide and solve a binary classification problem. And it is very easy to implement using linear algebra. But everything is not good with it, there are also problems. See, any classification problem and uh, regression problem method always suffer from the problem of overfitting. Here in this case also, this classifier can suffer from the problem of overfitting. Let me explain that. So, what we are, uh, the problem, what the problem is? The problem is we have a training data set and the classifier is getting overfitted to that. And if it is overfitted, then what will be the problem? The first problem will be that if you change the training data set slightly, then the whole classifier will get changed. Let me give you an example. In this diagram, notice two things. One is that uh, I have a very narrow margin width, right? very narrow, and that will uh, affect uh, and create another problem. Apart from that, which is not evident here, but if I add another data point somewhere here, you will see there will be a drastic change in the classifier. Let me do that. What I have done? I have added another blue point that is a positive sample 
in my training data set. And as you can see, if I go back, this was my classifier line, this was my decision boundary. And as I have added the new data point, it has changed drastically. So that means my classifier is very sensitive to my training data set. If you have left one or taken another one, your classifier will change. That's not a good classifier. The second problem is associated with the width of this margin area. As it is very narrow, in the previous case also it is very narrow, the problem is you may misclassify test sample which are close to the boundary. You can easily understand. Suppose I have actually a sample test sample which is really negative. We do not know, but it is suppose really negative, but using this classifier, it has come here. So what you will say? You will say as per this classifier, it is positive, but it is actually a negative one. But as it is, a very it is very close to the boundary, your classifier is making a mistake. So due to overfitting of the classifier to the data, we are facing these two problems. Now how can I solve that? Okay. There is a very simple way to sort it out. Here I have given two examples. And these two examples are coming from a new type of classifier which will use this maximal margin classifier pins principle but with a modification. The modification it, it does not use a hard margin but it is it uses soft margin. Let me explain what is soft margin. So sub check the first one. In this case, again the positive data are the blue colored one, the pink one are the uh, negative uh, data training label data set, this is a training data set and my classifier has created this decision boundary, it is two dimensional data, so it is a straight line and these are the margin boundary. So these are, I have the support vectors there. Now notice in one interesting thing, I have two positive and negative data point which are within that boundary region around the decision boundary in this margin width. In case of the previous example, we were not allowing any like that. There was in the previous examples when I was using maximal margin classifier, there is no data point in this region, in this strip between these margin boundaries. But in this case, the algorithm has allowed some training data point within this band, within this area of margin boundaries. Take the second example. In this case, it not only allowed some training data set to be within this margin area, at the same time it has allowed some data point which is supposed to be on this side of the decision boundary to move on the other side. So that means what we are doing, we are considering the margin as soft, it is not rigid. We are allowing some of the data point to be in the wrong side, in the wrong position. And that is what is done in the algorithm called support vector classifier. So what it is doing? It is allowing some of the data points to be on the wrong side, either on the wrong side of the hyperplane, decision hyperplane or it is allowing some of the data point to be in the region defined by the margin boundary. Now you should be, you must be thinking that uh, how should I control this softness, right? How much, how many data points should be allowed to violate this uh, strict rule that we have used earlier? That is a critical issue. I cannot allow all data points to violate the rules. So there must be some control, right? So the support vector classifier algorithm uses a tuning parameter C, if I vary that, I can restrict the extent and severity of this violation. What type of violation? Two type of violation. One is that the margin area is violated and the other is the hyperplane. In this case, uh, the margin is violated, whereas in this case, the both margin and the hyperplane constraint is violated. So if you consider C equal to 0, then this algorithm will become same as the maximal margin uh, classifier. If you have a C greater than 0, then it will become support vector classifier. Now what is the advantage of this support vector classifier which is nothing but an extension of maximal margin classifier 
with a tuning parameter that allows me to create soft margins. Let us look into that. The first advantage is that you can avoid overfitting to the training data and that is obvious. In the previous case, we have uh, 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 in when I was discussing maximal margin classifier, I have not allowed any violation. So, th th there was a problem of overfitting. You can think it in another way. Suppose you are doing regression and you are fitting a line in uh, nonlinear uh, curve to a data set. You can do one way, you can choose the polynomial in such a way that th the line will go through, the regress line will go through each and every data point that is overfitted. A good fitting is that some of the data point may be on the line, but the line will, as a whole will go between the line close to the point, but it will not go exactly to the line, the points, right. The same thing is here, to avoid overfitting as you can see, we are allowing some violations. These violations I am allowing, so it solves the problem of overfitting. The other thing that actually can get sorted to some extent is the problem of non-linearity. See both the support vector classifier and the original maximal margin classifier is a linear classifier, is not it? Because either I am creating a straight line or I am drawing a two-dimensional plane or a n minus 1 hyper, hyper plane. But essentially it is a linear separation of two classes, but it is not may not be true always. Sometime we may have non-linearity in the sample, the training data set itself. For example, I do not have a separate diagram here, but you can easily see maybe I could have done a classifier something like this by drawing a uh, line curve like this. If I could have decided that this is my classifier line, this is my ba decision boundary. Any data point on the other side of that boundary will be positive, any point on this side of the boundary will be negative. So, for that I need something non-linear, is not it? So, if I do not have any non-linear tool, if my algorithm cannot draw this type of, non create this type of non-linear boundaries, then support vector classifier is obviously much better than the usual maximal margin classifier. Now, as I talk, I am talking of non-linearity, let us look into a real non-linear problem. Here it is a two dimensional problem, I have two features x and y and uh, it is a binary classification problem. Again, looking at this data without doing any math, you can say that I cannot fit a, a straight line to classify this data, it is impossible. So, what you will prefer? You will prefer to draw something like this maybe, but your uh, SVC or maximal margin classifier cannot do that. So, how can I use the concept of support vector classifier, but handle this type of nonlinear problem? Okay. To do that, I have to play a trick. What I have to do? I have to map this data to a completely different space, in a different dimensional space, so that then they become linearly separable. Let me explain. Suppose I take another axis, these are two axes, right? It is a two dimensional problem x, y and uh, x and y. Suppose I add another dimension z and how I am defining z? For each data point, I know the value of x and I know the value of y. So, I calculate z equal to x square plus y square. So, it was initially two dimensional data. Now, I convert then to three dimension. So, for each data point now, I have x, I have y and z value and z is coming from x square plus y square, it is a quadratic equation. And now I plot this data not in two dimension, but in three dimension. Let us see what happens. Now you can easily see, I have x, y, z, three axis, it is a three dimensional plot and the red dot data and the blue data are now distinctly separated. Now you can easily imagine that I will pass a plane between these two. So now my SVC can work. So, what I have done? I have mapped my data from its own original dimension to a higher dimensional space and I used a quadratic equation. It does not mean that I have to always use quadratic, I have to choose the right function to do this mapping and that is what is done in the support vector machine. 
support vector machine is an extension of support vector classifier where you are not using uh, working on the original data set rather what you are doing you are mapping the data to a new space what you are doing you are enlarging the feature and predictor space to accommodate the non-linearity in the data and I have uh, shown that uh, graphically to explain obviously the algorithm will not do it graphically it will use some mathematical uh, functions so it uses something called kernels kernels are nothing but function which are used to do this type of mapping and then classification so there are many types of kernels available for support vector machines one of them uh, could be linear one if you use linear one it will become not, mm, nothing but support vector classifier because in case of support vector classifier you are using a linear function to do classification because a straight line is a linear one a plane is also a linear function similarly uh, it can have uh, a polynomial kernel the quadratic equation that i use is a polynomial of degree 2 you can have cubic uh, functions also so you can have cubic uh, kernel all together they are called polynomial kernels you can decide which type of polynomial you want to use and the another one which is very useful kernel is the radial basis function so what I will do now, I will discuss two examples to show the effect of these kernels and classification using the support vector machine. So this is uh, a data set where I have initially drawn a, uh, the classification line using the standard uh, maximal uh, margin classifier method. So essentially it is I am using the linear kernel, isn't it? So in this case, you can see this is the decision boundary and I have uh, support vector here but one major problem in this case my margin band is very narrow thin so that means I can always do uh, misclassification using this classifier you can easily see that possibly if I create a classifier something like this decision boundary something like this that may work better and that is what I have done. In the SVM, I said, okay, do not use the linear anymore, use the quadratic one and now it has nicely classified. So what is the here? I have this is the decision boundary, this is the margin area and you can see I have the support vector here, here and here. Now you can easily see it is much more reasonable classification, obviously it is not overfitting and you can easily understand that this will not misclassify usually for the test data set. So this is using the polynomial kernel where I have said to ask it to use the quadratic one. Now let us check another one. This one is difficult. I have data, positive data on both sides, the negative one in the middle. So what type of uh, cl classifier should uh, be nice here, right here? So I can consider maybe I should draw something like this, the decision boundary should be something like this. Now this one obviously cannot be done by linear it cannot be done by polynomial also if you have this complicated type of uh, mixture of uh, classes then what uh, is very useful is the kernel of radial basis function and you can see the result of that so here is my decision boundary and the margins are drawn and you can see easily that the data has been nicely classified so this brings me to the end of this lecture let me jot down what we have learned in this lecture. The first thing we learned, we learned about maximal margin classifier. It is essentially a linear method. It uses a decision hyperplane. In two dimension, it will be line. In three dimension data, it will be a uh, two dimensional plane. If for n dimensional data, I will have a n minus one hyperplane, which will work as a decision boundary to, to perform binary classification. And the principle that I use to get that decision hyperplane is that I, my algorithm tries to maximize the margin. What is margin? Margin is the distance of the closest data point from this decision boundary. And while discussing this, we learned about support vectors. These are the points which are on the present on the margin boundary. They decide the position of this decision hyperplane rest of the data point does not affect the uh, position of this decision hyperplane. Now we also discussed that the, this uh, margin, maximal margin classifier has the trouble of getting overfitted. So to avoid that 
we allow some violation of this margin maximal margin principle so that we get a new algorithm called support vector classifier and it helps us to avoid the overfitting problem to some extent and in some cases although support vector classifier is still a linear classifier still it can handle nonlinear data uh, problem to some extent now if i have really a sample where uh, lots of nonlinearity is there a linear separator will not be able to perform this job then i need one uh, algorithm which is one step ahead and that is called support vector machines support vector machines are nothing but extension of support vector classifier where what we are doing we are actually mapping the data in a different space and then we are trying to classify the data and all this job is done by mathematical functions called kernels and we have discussed about two kernels particularly one is uh, radial basis function the other one is polynomial one there are other uh, few other kernels also i have not discussed those and also i have not got into the mathematical details of all of these three algorithm that's all for this lecture thank you for learning with me today